welcome back to DXB today, where it's just, uh, it's just, we just realised that we should be charging consultancy fee for the show today <laughs> as well. Not one, not two, but three medical opinions for you to help you prepare best for the summer and of course to survive the coming months. Our next guest is a consultant bariatric uh, surgeon leveraging his expertise in treating weight related issues to deliver exceptional care uh, to patients of all ages. Please welcome to the show Dr. Samir Rahmani. Thank you so much indeed for being Thank with us. Thank you very much. Thank Great you. to have you Thank on you. board. Um, you. As the summer descends on us, look we know that the obesity epidemic, the, the, the disease that is obesity, is a scourge, not just the UA, the region, the world at the moment as well. And it is something that affects all ages. Uh, we've got a big problem with uh, teenage obesity here in the region and further afield as well. I'm just thinking, summer, more time inside, less activity as well. Is summer a friend or a foe for those that are suffering from obesity? Uh, thanks ever so much. Yes. Summer is always a tricky time for obesity, especially teenagers. And I'm talking about teenagers, especially people who are heading for universities. Yeah. Because uh, teenagers heading to university like grade 11 or 12, for example, uh, these are at critical stage because they're going to a very crucial part of their life. They want to be shape aware, they want to be really well, and they want to feel good, look good, um, because that's the image gonna be imprinted on their life for the next five, six years at the university. Mm. Um, so I do get a lot of teenagers, uh, especially in this part of the year, uh, trying to get sorted, especially after they finish their grade 12 exams, mm. uh, before they actually start uh, the university. Big move one. away as well. Big move it? away, yes, yeah. yeah. So I do see a lot of drive for this, but equally at the same time, people want to go away, or people want to relax after having <laughs> a heavy run of exams for grade 12, for example. Mm. Uh, so it's always tricky, but I do get, uh, and I do advise all people, and I do, I will do it for my daughter and my son. Mm. Uh, before they go to university, they need to get sorted. Mm. Um, because it's not only look good, it's feel good. Uh, they want to exercise, they want to go for trips, uh, uh, etc. Yeah. They want to really get themselves sorted. And there are many ways of sorting this out, um, especially nowadays. Because it is, as you said, it is an endemic now. Mm. It is about one in three people suffering from obesity all over oh. the world, not only in UAE. Mm. So, Doctor, you were saying there, like, to get things sorted. Like, what would you recommend? I mean, we're talking here about, like, surgery. Would you say yeah. that this is one way to fix Yeah, uh, it is, it is the last way issue? to fix. Yeah, it right. is the last way to fix. So, first of all, they have to be aware of their calorie intake. They have to be counseled by specialists. We have uh, in our team, for example, we have eating disorder specialists mm -hmm. who can coach them for a few months, do some, have some personal trainer, do some regular exercise, and then maybe with a combination of some injectables, maybe doctor before me, yeah. and she knows more about it as a family physician consultant. Um, so it's a combination of these conservative measures Okay, so you're not just going to put somebody straight in for like a serious no, surgery. No, so, because no. yeah, yeah. that was going to be my next kind yeah, of yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, there's lots of uh, medication out now, like such as a Zimpic, etc. Yeah. This, sure, yeah. would you recommend using something like that before going into a surgery? Yes, like, yes. So, so it's useful at two extremes. So, so when I, that's what I tell people. So when they have um, a little bit of excess weight, maybe 10, 15 kilos. So it's a bit of diet, some exercise, some injections then this would be feasible. Mm -hmm. And I also use it for people with really big excess weight, like they have 90 kilos of excess weight, 100 kilos of excess weight. So I use them as a bridge therapy. So use medication to drop their weight to make them more fit uh, for surgery in a in, in, in few, in few months time. Mm. Um, but the advice is just to have a, a set period of time and a target. It's not like I'm gonna try exercise uh, diet and injections forever. No, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I have six months, I have to drop that weight. If it is doable, then happy days. If not, and your body mass index is really high, and if you have other problems, then it's really the way forward is uh, surgery. Okay. Oh. Samir, I've got a, a broad and a slightly tricky question. I think we're all familiar with the sort of four um, pillars of a healthy lifestyle, diet, exercise, sleep, and the social thing. Um, I don't know the answer to this. Which do you think is most important if you have to focus on one? If I have to pick one, Andrew, it will be sleep. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Sleeping pattern is very important because our, our hormones get changed big time by changing our sleeping pattern. And, and, and we see nowadays, uh, even on the weekend, uh, kids change their sleep pattern. They start to sleep late and wake up late. And uh, when they wake up, they don't know whether this is breakfast, lunch, or an early dinner. Sure. Yeah. And, and they often get, okay, I missed breakfast now. I might have just some takeaway. Uh, they, are, they, 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 are, they don't walk anymore. They use scooters. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the easy in our compound. I don't see anybody who's walking. They're all kids. Like I'm talking about 10, 12 years old. So it's, it's, not, it's not the diet. It's not the exercise. It's just the lifestyle, as you said, Andrea. Doctor, I just wanted to ask you, uh, some people uh, tend to do the bypass surgery or like the, the surgery that where you cut like, I don't know, 75% of your stomach, something That's like that. Easy, yeah. yeah, so I'm not sure uh, which do you recommend for what cases? Because I think a lot of people would also not know what, what's happening or what yeah, they yeah. need. So thank you. That's a very good question. And I, th I think most people know now because these are very old surgeries. Yeah. Um, so we have a sleeve and a bypass, different yes. type of bypass. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, the, the way we choose it depends on the patient's size. So mm -hmm. if the patient is diabetic, if the patient has reflux, if they have other problems, if the excess weight is really high, uh, if they are chocoholic, okay, okay. this yeah. will push us slightly more toward doing a bypass. Okay. Okay. Um, because, because sleeve is a metabolic surgery, so it's not only making you eat less, it will make you burn more. Mm, okay. um, while bypass, in addition to these two, will make you absorb less. It's about 25% reduction in your absorption. Okay. Um, and that's why they have to stay on vitamins for a long period. That's what I wanted to ask because a lot of people that do the bypass tend to lose their hair and uh, their nails get weaker because they're not getting in enough. Um, that, that's weaker. only in the first three to six months. But, okay. uh, but this is a very fun question because I get patients who are diabetic, hypertensive, yeah. high cholesterol, they are on a Mm. a big uh, bunch of medication and I yes. tell them you're going to chuck all this in the bin and you're going to go on one multivitamin tablet. So I said, oh, I'm going to stay this all my life. I said, yes, well, that's okay. one tablet versus many tablets. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, Doctor, I don't want to put you out of work when I ask this yeah, question, no, but fine. we've got to, how do you think we're going to like re-educate uh, the young people now to maintain and have a healthier lifestyle? Because ideally that's the the hope, isn't it, that yeah. they don't need to go for surgery, they can educate sure. themselves. So what steps do you think we need to make in society to it's, make it's, that re-education? It's, it's, yeah, it's a simple answer. It has to start with the parents and the school together. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 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 you, you, we have to watch our children all the time. So we, I mean, for my, for my kids, we have a scale there, like every day or two, they have to check it. Uh, just, it's not abusing them, but mm -hmm. just to be aware of their weight and what to do and uh, but I see very little efforts from school, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and this can be improved in the future mm -hmm. because um, it's, it's, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. People are getting more lazy. People are getting um, uh, driven easily to everywhere. Things using get driven to you, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. AI and metaverse yeah, yeah. and all of that. People are just thinking, oh. It's not getting better, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very definitely. true. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. Oh, it's been a pleasure to have thank that you. incredible insight. I think you're going to stay with us now while we actually get to know Dr. Andrew a little bit better because Ahmed is the man with the questions. It's uh, So DXP we've got something 60. called DXP <laughs> in 60 and we just tend to ask you a couple of questions in 60 seconds to get to know you better. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to cue the clock in <laughs> No one three. told me about this. It's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to cue the clock in three, two, one. If you weren't working in the medical field, what would you be doing? I'd like to be a pop star. <laughs> okay, that's nice. <laughs> uh, what kind of pop star? Uh, rock and roll. Okay, nice. Uh, what is your motto in life and work? Uh, do the best you can. Okay. And your go-to restaurant in Dubai? Ah, I know it's hard. It's Koya. So, Koya, okay. And what is the top tip to help survive the heat in the summer? I know we talked about it a little bit, but one, th one tip. <laughs> Stay indoors. Okay, fair. <laughs> or travel. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, what's your favorite way to stay active? I'm a cyclist. Uh, okay. I spend a lot of time on a bicycle. Um, I used to race motorbikes, I crashed them, so now I'm on a bicycle. I spin every single day. <laughs> <laughs> so we have something in common. Um, oh, your your go-to relaxation spot in the city? 
Um, this kind of comes back to the restaurant a little bit. I love the lime tree. I've got friends, we meet every weekend for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, so down there and then can walk on the beach. Okay, and just one last question because we ran out of time. Why Dubai? That's a long story. I can't <laughs> tell you that one. Not in, not in 60 seconds. Okay, <laughs> fair. One word. A plane. Okay. <laughs> nice. An opportunity. Well, thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us on today's thank show. Thank Andrew, you. can't thank you enough for joining us as our guest co-host today. Thank you for your uh, professional insight. Uh, enjoy the summer. Thank uh, you. Uh, and we will get you back on very soon. And Smith, thank you so much. Thanks for summer. Really good to see you. Good to see you. Great summer. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for all of your thought. My pleasure. Right. We ain't going anywhere. We've still got plenty to look forward to. In fact, we'll be playing out with Naz in just a few moments' time. Stay with us.